In this video, we are going to be using our knowledge of parent functions and transformations on those parent functions, what we've been learning about before, to actually graph new functions, graph functions that are not just parent functions. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to start with the easy ones, with linear functions. If I needed a graph, y equals one-third x plus two. All right, first of all, I know it's linear. It doesn't have any two exponent, didn't have any absolute value bars. I know it's going to make what shape? It's going to be a line. So let's just start with our parent function, all right? If this one-third and the two weren't here, my parent function would just start at zero, zero. It'd go up one over one from there. Again, that's not the answer to this problem. This is the parent function. I'm drawing this as a reference so that I can kind of check to make sure I'm doing the final answer correctly. So this, again, not the final answer. This is the parent graph. Now, these numbers, first of all, this plus two at the end, what does that do to the graph? Moves it which way? Up two. So instead of starting here at zero, zero, my final answer is gonna move up two. It's gonna start here at zero, two. And the slope is not one over one. That fraction right there is a vertical shrink of one third. That means it's gonna go up one over three. So from that two, up one over one, two, three. Up one over one, two, three. Same thing, it goes down one to the left three. So this one, I want to make this one darker. This one is the actual final answer. So you might be thinking, well, Mr. Hotard, do I have to draw the dotted line? Do I have to draw the parent function every time? For now, yes. I want you to draw the parent function and draw the new function. Just make sure that you're either doing a dotted line or maybe use a different color to distinguish which one is the actual final answer. All right, let's look at another example, another linear one. If I have y equals negative 2x, minus five. Again, parent function, just like the last one, would start at zero, zero, go up one over one. Same parent function for every linear function. All right, now, this time, I have a minus five at the end, moves my graph which way? Down five, so down one, two, three, four, five. Here's my starting point, my y-intercept, and then two things happening. I have a negative in the front of the equation, that's going to do what to it? It's going to flip it. It's going to be an x-axis reflection. So instead of going this way, I know it's going to be going this way. And I have a 2, all right? That's going to be a vertical stretch. So it's going to be twice as steep. So right here, instead of going up 1 over 1, I'm going to go down 2 over 1. Down 2 to the right one. You always go to the right first when you're drawing these graphs, all right? And then I can also go up 2 left. So here is my final answer. There's my linear function. Now constant functions, those are easy. Those are equations like y equals some number. So if I had y equals negative four. All right, do you remember what kind of line these constant functions make? They make a horizontal line. So parent function would just be right here on top of the x-axis. That one's easy. This one, constant function, is going to be a horizontal line going through negative four. So down one, two, three, four. Here's my answer. All right, so that, those are easy. Now let's look at our other two types of functions. Absolute value functions. You remember, what does the problem have to have in order to make it an absolute value equation? It has to have those bars in it, the absolute value bars. So if I have y equals absolute value of x plus three, close that absolute value, and then minus two at the end. Let's just start with our parent function. Remember, absolute value makes a what shape? makes a v-shape. So parent function would start here at 0, 0, go up 1, over 1, and it would go in both directions. Up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the right 1. So here's my parent function for an absolute value function. Now this one, that's not the final answer. Now I need to do these transformations. I have a plus 3 on the inside and a minus 2 on the outside. First of all, which way does this minus 2 move my graph? Up or down? And move it down too. And then plus three, remember the one inside does the opposite of what it looks like it should do. Plus three, gonna move it which way? To the left three. So I'm gonna take each of these points, move down two to the left three. So the vertex down two, left one, two, three. There's my new vertex. All right, my new tip of the V. Now, there is no number in front right here, in front of the absolute value. That means there's an automatic what? 
1. So I could take each of these points, move down 2 over 3, but really I know the slope is 1. So from here I could still just go up 1 over 1, both directions, and that'll do the same thing. So there's my graph. All right, let's try another one. Y equals two, absolute value, x minus four. So again, just start with our parent function, absolute value, so it's a V-shape, starts at zero, zero, goes up one over one. Let's do a quick sketch of that. Now, this time, I have minus four inside, gonna move my graph which direction? to the right four, all right, minus four at the end would move it down, minus four inside moves it right. Now, this two in the front, this isn't 21, by the way, this two absolute value of x minus four. This two in the front, it's gonna stretch it. That's like my slope. So let's start by just moving this vertex to the right four, one, two, three, four. Now, instead of going up one over one, what do you think the graph's gonna do? It's gonna go up two over one. It's always over one if it doesn't have anything written. So up two over one, both ways to the left and to the right. So there is my absolute value function. By the way, I'm just drawing these arrows on here because the graph keeps going forever. It doesn't stop right there. Okay, one more absolute value. Y equals negative absolute value of X, close that, plus two. So again, let's start with our parent function. Start at zero, zero, goes up one over one, both directions, gonna make a V shape. All right, now this time, I have plus two at the end. Which way does that move? Up two and a negative in the front. What's that mean for my graph? It's gonna flip it. It's gonna be an x-axis reflection. So instead of starting here at zero, zero, I know it's gonna start here at zero, two. It's gonna go up two. And then this graph should be flipped upside down. So this time there's a negative one right here. That means from this point, I'm gonna go down one to the right one and down one to the left one. So my new graph will look like this. It's an upside down V because of the negative. So that's absolute value. Linear functions make a line. Absolute function, value functions make a V. You remember V for value. Now last thing, quadratic functions. All right, what does the equation have to have to be a quadratic function? It has to have two exponent. And what shape does the graph make? makes a u-shape, a parabola. So let's start with this one. Let's say we have y equals parentheses x plus two squared plus two. So let's start with our parent function here. Parent function would start at zero, zero, go up one over one, but it wouldn't keep going up one over one. All right, it's gonna make a curve. So it, it would look like this. That's the parent function. Now let's apply our transformation. I have a plus two on the inside of the parentheses, moves it which way? Left two, and plus two at the end does what? Up two. So let's take this vertex, move left two and up two. I'm gonna go right here. Same thing with all these points. Now, again, the slope is just one. So from this vertex, I know it's gonna go up one over one. All right, that doesn't give me any more points. Don't keep going up one over one. Remember, it's not a V shape. If you write a V, it's wrong up one over one and then it curves from there. Okay. If I needed to get some other points, this is enough of what we did here to get a quick sketch. If I needed to know other points, I'd have to make a table, plug in some numbers for x, but I'm not gonna do that here. All right, two more quick problems and we'll be done. If I have y equals negative three x squared minus one. Again, x squared telling me it's going to be a parabola, so let's just start with our parent function. Zero, zero, then goes up one over one. Here's our parabola. Our parent function. Now, minus one in the back does what to the equation? Moves down one. It's not in parentheses, so it's going to go down one, so let's bring that vertex down one right here. And then this negative three in the front. First of all, the negative in front means what? x-axis reflection, it's gonna be open and down, and that three, all right, three is a whole number, it's gonna stretch it, it's gonna make a vertical stretch, it's gonna make it thinner. 
all right? So starting here, instead of going up one over one, it's negative, I'm gonna go down three over one. From here, down one, two, three to the right one, down three to the left one. And again, don't keep going down three over one. Don't put a point right here, that's not right. It's gonna curve. Gonna look like that. That looks kind of like a V. It's supposed to look like a U. All right. Last one. This is the one that might confuse some people. Y equals one half parentheses x minus two squared. So again, parent function. It's a parabola. Start at zero zero, up one over one, and then curves. Here's my parent function. Now, first of all, the minus 2 in parentheses moves it which way? To the right 2. So let's take that vertex, go to the right 2, right here. Now, this time, there's no negative, so it's still opening up. This 1 half in the front, this fraction, what does the fraction in the front of the equation do to the graph? It shrinks it. It's a vertical shrink. All right, it's going to basically, vertical shrink would open it up. You're pulling it down, so it would make the graph wider. All right, now, here's the part that people tend to mess up on. A lot of people see this and say, okay, the slope's one half, so I'm gonna go from here, I'm gonna go up one over two both ways. That's not right. This A value, the number in front of the parentheses, it tells you the slope as you go to the right and left one unit. All right, so what that means is from that vertex, I'm always gonna go to the right one, I'm gonna go up that much. I'm gonna go to the right one, up a half. To the left one, up a half. All right, this number, it's the slope from the vertex to one unit to the right or left. So I would just go up half a block and that would cause my graph to open up wider. All right, same thing like if that had been one fourth in the front, then I would have gone up one fourth of a block, less than halfway, and I would have put a point right here. All right, if you had two thirds, you'd go up two thirds of the block to the right one and to the left one. That fraction just makes it open wider. Okay, so y'all have some practice problems to try. Make sure you're trying those out. Don't forget to graph the parent function and then identify the transformations and go from there.